Good morning, students. Today we are going to learn the next part of the lesson, weathering and soil formation. This particular video includes the types of rock and their formation, and they have been specially designed for the seventh standard. Now, rocks are made up of one or more than one mineral. They are aggregate of minerals and do not have any definite chemical composition. On the contrary, minerals are naturally occurring inorganic substances. They have a definite chemical composition. Most of the crust is made up of rocks. Rocks not only form types of landforms, but also form the basis of soil and its formation. According to the mode of occurrence and formation of rocks, they can be classified into three, namely igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. Let us first learn about igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are formed by the cooling of the lava which comes out from the volcano. The lava solidifies to form rocks. So, these rocks which are formed by fire, that is why they are known as ignis. It is derived from this word ignis which means fire. These rocks which are formed Due to the molten magma or lava being cooled and solidified are known as primary rocks. Now, igneous rocks can be of two types. They are intrusive igneous rocks and extrusive igneous rocks. Now, as the name suggests, intrusive igneous rocks. Now, when the magma is unable to reach the surface of the earth. It solidifies within the cracks and fissures below the earth. The grains become large and they take a very long time to cool and they are crystalline in nature. Now, this kind of rocks which cool under the surface of the earth are known as intrusive igneous rocks while all those rocks which are cooled due to the cooling of the lava on the surface are known as extrusive igneous rock. So when magma reaches the surface during a volcanic eruption it is known as lava and this solidifies to form extrusive igneous rocks. The grains of extrusive igneous rocks are very fine due to rapid cooling and they are normally not crystalline. For example, basalt. Now these are a few examples of intrusive igneous rocks and extrusive igneous rocks. Now both these rocks, be it intrusive or extrusive, are hard. They are very hard in nature. They can be dark in color or light depending upon the oxides, whether it is acidic or basic. They are crystalline in nature. There is no occurrence of layers because they have hardened due to the cooling of the lava either inside the earth or outside the earth. Generally water does not pass through them so they are mostly non-porous and there is absence of fossils. Some of the common igneous rocks are basalt, granite, dolerite, gabbro, pumice, etc. Next we learn about sedimentary rocks. 
Now, as the name suggests, sedimentary rocks are formed by sediments deposited in a river or a lake or any other water body. They get deposited in layers which get compacted and become hard to form sedimentary rocks. So here we can see how the sediments are getting deposited in this water body layer after layer and these top layers begin to put a lot of pressure on the underlying layer compressing them and turning them into rocks. Sedimentary rocks can be of three types. They can be mechanically formed sedimentary rocks, organically or chemically formed sedimentary rocks. Mechanically formed sedimentary rocks are formed due to the layers which are deposited under the water body. So here you can see all these rocks are showing definite layers, continuous layers. So this is an example of a mechanically formed sedimentary rock. This rock has been formed chemically when water evaporates and leaves behind the crystals which ultimately form rocks because all these salts was dissolved with the water. The water evaporate and left behind the salt which ultimately turn into rock and it is an example of chemically formed sedimentary rocks. Organically formed sedimentary rocks are coal and petroleum. They have been formed due to the decomposition of the remains of plants and animals. These are a few examples of sedimentary rocks and as far as the characteristics of sedimentary rocks are concerned, they form layers. They are stratified. Why are they stratified? Because they are laid down under the water body in layers and so they are stratified. Presence of fossils are very common in sedimentary rocks. The rocks can be porous or permeable. Common sedimentary rocks include sandstone, coal, gypsum, rock salt, mudstone, etc. Metamorphic rocks, as the name suggests, it has come from the word metamorphosis which means a complete change. So igneous and sedimentary rocks might have undergone a complete change due to tremendous pressure and heat which was exerted on them. As a result the chemical composition of the igneous and the sedimentary rocks must have changed which gave way to a totally new type of a rock. Metamorphic rocks can occur due to thermal metamorphosism, that is heat build up and they, the rocks are subjected to intense heat which changes their characteristics. Dynamic metamorphosis occurs when pressure plays an important role to bring about a change in the rocks. As far as the 
characteristics of metamorphic rocks are concerned, there is absence of layers, no fossils are found. Normally they are non-porous, they might be crystalline and they can be composed of one mineral. Common metamorphic rocks are gneiss, quartzite and slate. So due to heat and pressure, when granite is exposed to tremendous heat and pressure, it turns into gneiss, which is harder than the igneous rock granite. A sedimentary rock like sandstone may turn into quartzite due to excessive heat and pressure. When shale, which is a sedimentary rocks, rock is subjected to excessive heat and pressure, it might turn into slate. Rocks change from one form or the other due to various conditions prevailing and this result in the cycling of the rocks which we know which we call the rock cycle. Now let's see how it happens. Now we all know that igneous rocks are primary rocks. They are formed due to cooling of the lava and when this igneous rock is exposed on the surface it gets eroded and the sediments get deposited in the water body forming sedimentary rocks. The sedimentary rocks as well as igneous rocks, they are subjected to heat and pressure and may turn into metamorphic rock. Now both igneous, metamorphic and even sedimentary rocks are subjected to heat and pressure and they melt and they therefore are forced to go beneath the earth and again they erupt out in the form of volcanic eruption, get eroded, form sediments, form sedimentary rocks which again undergo changes to form metamorphic rocks. Now this continuous process of rock transformation from one to another is known as the rock cycle. So students, we have learned today about what are rocks and minerals, what are the different types of rocks and how rock cycle occurs. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.